Hi everyone, this is Kasia Zmokwa from Digital Art Classes and in this clip I will cover the major update for Capture 120, so this is May 2020 and I'm talking about the first big update, the 13.1. So in this new update the tools such as healing and cloning brush were very very greatly improved and the difference between the previous Capture 1 version in terms of skin retouch and the current version is really massive. So if you were working with Capture One before, you know very well that if you had just a few spots to heal on your portraits, you could do this either with the heal layer or you could move over and try to remove them with the spot removal tool. However, when it comes to the number of layers, we still have the limitation. In Capture One you can work with maximum 16 layers and when it comes to the spot removal tool you can have up to 100 healed points. So if you had quite a complex retouch to perform, this was simply not doable without round tripping to Photoshop. So now let's see how these improved tools work in action. So we have now dedicated tools for healing and cloning. Before you could just add here new clone or heal layer, but now you can pick the tools either from the layers panel, so here is your healing brush and here is the cloning brush, or from the tool tab over there. So let's start with healing. I'm going to pick the brush from here and let's zoom in a little bit on the portrait and let's say I would like to remove some some of these blemishes on the model's face. So first let's right click on the image and let's access our brush settings. So when it comes to the size, it's much more convenient to adjust this with the square brackets. But when it comes to hardness, let's go all the way down to zero opacity and flow. Let's set to 100. And for the moment we have the last option picked. So display arrows, you will see how it works. So let's say I want to remove this blemish. So all I need to do is to just start painting over this area in my image. If I release, you can see that Capture One automatically created the source point and the heal layer was automatically added here. So if I hit M on my keyboard, you can see that the mask is visible. This is the place where I have painted and we can readjust manually the source point. Let's zoom in a little bit more. And if we decide that this doesn't work, we can still readjust the point to fix this if we can achieve a little bit better results. So this is before and after. I don't think this is really efficient. So let's just get rid of this point and let's try again. So I'm going to actually reduce size of my brush. I'm hitting left square bracket on my keyboard and I will paint over this little area here. If I move away, this works a little bit better. I picked for the beginning quite a difficult spot. So this is before and after. Let's try continue working on the forehead. So you can basically continue working, painting over those spots. And this is really great, especially if you have some experience with the previous Capture One version, just the feeling that there is no need to create new layer for each new source point. This is really, really massive improvement. So you can continue working that way. And each time if you decide that the source point is not really working perfectly, you can still readjust it manually. If these arrows are bothering you and you would prefer to work in a bit more clean way, you can right click on the image and untick the last option so the arrows won't be displayed anymore. And you can continue painting. And I would say that in a situation when the source point is not working properly, you can switch those arrows again on and then you can readjust it manually. OK, so we have removed some small blemishes with the tool for the moment. Let's now try to remove this big patch here. So I'm just going to increase slightly size of the brush and let's go with hardness a little bit down. 
and let's try to paint over this area here and we'll see what result we can get. Okay, something like this. So the source point was picked automatically from here, but I'm going to readjust it manually and move it upwards. Okay, something like this. Let's try to find a little bit better position and the result we have achieved is quite good. I'm going to add a little bit to the mask here. If we hit M on the keyboard, we can see this is the mask. So to continue working on the mask, you need to first select this source point. So now it's highlighted in orange and I can continue painting. So I will in decrease size of the brush and just add a little bit more around here. And maybe now I will decrease hardness further. Okay, so let's just cover this area here because we had this darker edge visible. Let's switch off the mask. We can see that you can fine tune the mask that way and the results we are getting are really, really nice. Okay, let's zoom out. So that way you can work with the heel brush and you can get very, very fast and quite efficient results when it comes to this source of portrait. Of course, if you are working with a beauty image and if you need to perform very complex and very precise skin retouch, you still need to round trip to Photoshop. So you can work that way with the new heel brush. Let's now jump and select the clone brush. So the biggest difference between the healing brush and the cloning brush is that at first, when you are working with the cloning brush, you have to set your source point manually in order the tool to be working properly or to be working at all. And the second massive difference is that when you are working with the healing brush, the algorithm behind the tool is working that way that it is trying to blend the healed spot with the surrounding area. When you are working with the cloning brush, this is not the case. The Capture One will simply copy, will clone the selected area and position it somewhere else. So let's say I would like to clone this mole on the model's arm and reposition it. So I'm going to first set my source point manually. Let's hit the Alt key and click on the mole and I will like to position it, let's say here. So if I paint over there, you can see that the object, the mole was cloned, but it is not blended with the surrounding area. So Capture One just literally took this area that I have selected from here and cloned it over there. So this is the massive difference between the healing and the cloning tool. So that way you can clone small areas, small objects. And here the same, you can just switch off the arrow if you like. There is no limit for the source point for the cloning tool as well. You can continue cloning. Let's just switch on the layers and I'm going to get rid of this one. So I have shown you how to clone very small area in the image. Let's just select it and delete. And now let's jump over to a different image and I will show you how you can clone, how you can work with the cloning tool with a large element. So let's just increase size of the brush. So at first, as you remember, you have to set the source point manually. So I'm hitting Alt key on my keyboard and pressing hitting here in the image. And now I have to paint to clone. So I'm increasing size of the brush with the right square bracket. And let's say I want to paint over here. And that way I'm cloning from the source point that was set automatically and just recreating the cloned area in other part of the image. This of course can be adjusted manually. Here this part is not matching. So I can just select the source point and move it slightly upward. So now we got a little bit better result. 
So as you can see with the cloning tool, you can work on the micro and macro level and exactly the same way you can work with the healing tool. So let's just get rid of this and I'm going to pick now the healing tool and let's see what happens if I paint over the subject. So let's increase size of the brush. This is set to 100. Perfect. Let's maybe increase hardness and let's paint over the subject in our image and this is the result that we get. So the source point was picked automatically by Capture One and our subject vanished. So this is an example how you can work on a macro level with the healing brush tool. Now I'm going to jump over and show you another super cool feature that was added to Capture One. So I'm talking about the feature before and after. You can access it from here and it works in two modes. The full view and the split view slider. So if I select the second one, you have slider and by moving it, you can see the before and after. So this is the image after applying adjustment with the big healing brush and this is the original image before. Let's now apply some color. So I'm jumping over to this image and let's say I like the adjustments, the style, the color that was created here with this portrait. So I can very quickly reapply it to other images because they were taken at the similar lighting conditions. So all I need to do is to just select the image, copy the adjustments, add other three images and reapply the adjustments. So now that way I have color applied to all my images. And as you can see, the slider works on multiple selected images as well. So this is one of the modes you can work, the multiple view and the slider. You can work as well with the full view and now to see the before and after, all you need to do is to hit Y on your keyboard. So this works on multiple images, this works on single selected image as well. So this is before and after and you can switch between the modes. You can select the split view slider and see your image before and after. So in my opinion, these are the biggest improvements, the new feature before and after and the greatly improved cloning and healing brush in Capture One 120. If you would like to learn more about Capture One, check out my brand new course on Capture One 120, Capture One Pro 20, your fast track to unforgettable photos. Link in the description below. Here you can watch the trailer video, you can find details about the course and you can download the full course curriculum. You can download it over there. So I have launched this course five days ago and as you can see here, you can get it with the 50% off discount. The offer will be extended till the end of this week. It will end on Monday, May 25th. So if you have any questions, ask me in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. This was Kasia Zmokła from Digital Art Classes.